What's going on YouTube, GSNow right here, so in today's video we're going to discuss about the current situation of the iOS 11.x and 10.x jailbreak, because there are a lot of people working on jailbreaks currently, especially for iOS 10.3.3 and lower on 64-bit, so I decided to make an update video to cover everything that's going on up. So um, some of the information I'm going to present is already known by my daily viewers, but there is also new information that has just uh, been published and I would like to share it with you. So I'm going to start start with the fact that Helix has been updated. In case you did uh, miss this information, Helix being the iOS 10.3.3 jailbreak for the 32-bit devices, well 10.3.3 and lower, has been updated to RC2 or Release Candidate 2, which fixes the damned JavaScript bug. So uh, this bug was actually uh, introduced in uh, the RC1 or Release Candidate 1 in the initial release. And uh, once you jailbroke with Helix, you pretty much broke Safari. If you open Safari, it will would tell you, you know, you need to enable JavaScript and something like that. Now, if you have that problem and you did not know, RC2 has been uh, released a couple days ago by Teamstar and it fixes that bug. So you can download the new IPA and use it and it will fix that problem. Speaking of things that have been updated, uh, we're talking about Cool Booter, which um, you probably know it is a tool for dual booting. You can dual boot, for example, iOS 10.3.3 jailbroken and iOS 7 or iOS 6 on an iPhone 5 and so on, which is quite nice. You select on which version you want to be and you just boot into it. And uh, it has been updated to work with iOS 10.3.x, which is quite dope. This happened a couple days ago, but I decided to include this in a update video and not to make a video on its own. So if you're interested in Cool Booter, you can now go ahead at the repo at um, HTTPS coolbooter.com and you will be able to get Coolbooter and use that. Speaking about iOS 11.x, now we're getting back to the um, Libra iOS. This is a jailbreak for the iOS 11.x and it supports iOS 11.0 to iOS 11.1.2. It doesn't support iOS 11.2 and it doesn't support iOS 11.2.1. This one has also been updated. Now something you should keep um, in mind about this jailbreak is that it doesn't contain Cydia for the moment. It's been released by Morpheus or Jonathan Levin and uh, it's pretty much very stable. It's safe to use it compared to, you know, uh, Topanga and um, you can use it. It does give you SSH, it does give you um, the ability to stop updates and so on, but it doesn't have Cydia for the moment. It received an update to the version 11.1 and uh, you can read the uh, update login here. It's now containing a GUI, it's supporting all iDevices uh, thanks to the student here and whatever, but it does not contain the Cydia nor the substrate for the moment. Of course, I will keep you updated once the substrate and Cydia are added to this jailbreak, but the iOS 11.1.x jailbreak and the iOS 11.x jailbreak is pretty much here. It's done. We just wait for Cydia to be updated, which is dope. With Liber iOS came the Liber TV, which in here is a jailbreak for the tvOS 11.0 and 11.1 on the Apple TV 4 and the 4K, which works on the same principle. It's created by the same Jonathan Levin, so you should go ahead and uh, check out the instructions in here. Links are in the description. If you're interested in using this, if you have an Apple TV, you want to install. Now you're going to ask me, what the hell can I do with an Apple TV being jailbroken? Well, I don't know, Cody. Anyways, uh, the uh, next thing I would like to talk about is the iOS 10.3.x jailbreak status for the 64-bit devices. As you probably know, uh, Helix has been released. It's a jailbreak for iOS 10.3.3 and lower, but only for 32-bit devices, which means that 64-bit users, uh, that is iPhone 5s and newer, are simply left behind for the moment. Well, not anymore. Uh, there are quite a lot of projects. In fact, I think there are like five different dudes working on jailbreaks for iOS 10.3.3 and lower on 64-bit for the moment, which is quite dope. And at first we have Joseph Shenton here working on Coffee Jailbreak, which I didn't know how to pronounce in my previous video. Shame on me. Anyways, it's pretty much a project based upon Vortex and uh, Vortex 64 and uh, Async Wake and KPP by Xerob, so it's a contraption that combines multiple exploits and it's in development. The next one is Meridian, about which I talked in my previous video, and um, this one is again for 64-bit devices, iOS 10.3.x, that means iOS 10.3, 10.3.1, 10.3.2 and 10.3.3, which is also coming soon. And uh, you pretty much have a demo in here posted by Sparky um, at IB Sparks. 
and you can see it in action. It's quite good uh, and it's still a work in progress, so it's not released, but he is actively working on it. So he is somebody you should follow if you're interested in a 64-bit 10.3.x jailbreak. The next guy is somebody I did not present in my previous video because he has posted uh, this relatively recent. So um, he says in here, now I do not know this guy, but he says in here, quote, so the iOS 10.x.y jailbreak is done, which means iOS 10 in general, all iOS 10 versions. Uh, jailbreak is done. Just getting the tool done. Please be patient. ATA a week. So in an almost a week, if this guy delivers, we're going to get a jailbreak for the 10.x, which might include iOS 10.2 and 10.1.1. Then we have uh, Sticktron in here, who also created a jailbreak, and he posted this today. And he says in here, Goblin jailbreak. It's almost here, and it's a work in progress jailbreak for 64-bit devices, iOS 10.3.x. Kernel exploit by Saigusa, KPP bypass by QWERTY WURIOP, which means it's going to use a KPP bypass. I have no idea how he had uh, ported the KPP bypass to 10.3.x, but yeah, that's him. And the patch finder from Xerob, and he says in here, jailbreak yo. So yeah, it's pretty interesting what's going on currently in the jailbreak community, and I'm only so happy to say that the cool booter is finally updated, because I was waiting for this update. I literally waited for this update, since now I'm able to go back to iOS 6.x on my iPhone 5, to dual boot it, that is, and um, I would really, really love to be able to get back on the iOS 6 on that device. And since it's a dual boot, it means you're not erasing the 10.3.3 partition. So that's pretty much what's going on currently in the jailbreak community. Those are the active developers for the 10.3.x jailbreaks on 64-bit. So no, guys, you are not forgotten. You did not waste your uh, chance if you stayed on 10.3.x. It's just taking a little bit more time. But when it comes, you will be jailbroken. Anyways, uh, as a final note in here, I would like to remind you again about the course that I have created. If you want to become yourself an iOS developer and learn how all this stuff is being done, how to make iOS applications for the App Store, and how to code on the iPhones and not only to use applications created by others. Here is the course that I have created with PhoneLab and it's definitely nice. Check it out. A lot of people have already checked it out and I can tell you, you're going to like it if you're into programming. Here is the class curriculum you can check out on our website. You press this arrow in here to get more information on what we provide and um, we have videos in here, we have text-based lessons. And you can use the preview button in here to see some of them for free without purchasing the course to see what we are giving to you. So why not checking it out? You have a coupon in the description down below if you're purchasing for one year, which will save you 60 bucks right off. Or if you're purchasing for one month, you can save five bucks using the coupon LP5 off. You can check it out in the description down below. So that's pretty much what's going on, uh, guys. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to stay updated. I will keep you updated with anything that moves in the jailbreak community. I'm GS Snow. Till the next time, peace out.